the year two students are coming to the end of their studies of anatomy anyway and they're kind of doing a pub quiz thing of anatomy and pathology you know real nice clinical anatomy stuff at the moment and working together as teams it's all very informal but somewhat competitive so i'm 3d printing a trophy or trying to for the winning team it's going to be a big heart on the plinth fingers crossed that it works Okay, so while that's printing, which will take 13 hours, um, if it works, um, let's do a bit more anatomy. Um, we were talking about the female reproductive system last week. I went on for about half an hour about that and still didn't cover everything. This week I thought I'd talk about the male reproductive system because again, we've been doing it in teaching. Um, my penis is broken. It's lost a knobby bit. There are lots of things I'd like to talk about. I'd like to talk about testicular cancer. I'd like to talk about the blood supply and lymphatics and spread of that. I'd like to talk about the histology and the cells of the testes. I'd like to talk about the penis and the mechanisms of erection and all those sorts of things. But if I, if I start talking about the male reproductive system and everything, I'll be here all day. I thought a sensible place to start, um, which covers quite a lot of this, would be something else I do in teaching, which is Talk about how spermatozoa get from the testis out through the tip of the penis. And by doing that, we cover a whole bunch of uh, interesting and important structures. Essentially, we cover the functioning stuff of much of the male reproductive system, right? So let's do that. We'll start at the testis out here. Um, the testis, testes, testicle, testicles, got lots of good names, lots of other names as well. Each testis is essentially um, a load, I mean, a load of microscopic tubes folded, and these are the seminiferous tubules. And in the seminiferous tubules around the wall, we have germ cells, we have, uh, so, germ stem cells, which are making new spermatozoa all the time. That process is spermatogenesis. So you can see, if you look down the microscope, at these uh, spermatogonia, uh, maturing and producing somewhat mature spermatocytes and you can see those spermatocytes and tails in the center of the seminiferous tubules. Maybe we'll look at that one day, maybe I'll get the microscope out. Spermatozoa form in those seminiferous tubules and in there you also have Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. Uh, so these are cells that are, uh, are looking after that process of spermatozoa Genesis, looking after those cells and doing a bunch of jobs there and also producing testosterone of course, testes are the main place that testosterone is made. Um, so, seminiferous tubules, loads and loads of spermatozoa, loads and loads of tubes, so massive, massive surface area. And those spermatozoa have got to pass through those seminiferous tubules until they get to the way out. And the way out is, is through this bit here. So the testis is covered in tunica albuginea. It's a really firm, smooth, ovoid structure, the testis, but you can palpate posteriorly this ridge, this mass, and this is a normal mass. This is the epididymis. And the spermatozoa and the seminiferous tubules are gonna pass through uh, the rete testis, um, the straight tubules, and they're gonna, they're gonna pass out to the epididymis. And they're gonna descend slowly through the epididymis, which takes a number of days, and they're gonna to continue to mature as they descend. So, so spermatozoa are being produced all the time, um, and, they, and they collect. They descend in the epididymis, and from the base of the epididymis, we find the ductus deferens, used to be called the vas deferens, still gets called the vas deferens. And of course it's the vas deferens or the ductus deferens that you cut uh, in a vasectomy, because by doing that, you stop any spermatozoa getting out of the testes and going anywhere. Um, and by doing that, you affect spermatozoa production, it all, you, you know, it's a self-regulating thing. Um, anyway, so spermatozoa drop down the epididymis, pass into the ductus deferens, and then they ascend. And here, we've got the uh, spermatic cord. And there are a number of structures and a number of layers in the spermatic cord. And inside there, we've got all these blood vessels. You can see this pampiniform plexus of veins. 
we've got branches of the testicular artery and what have you, um, but the vas deferens inside this spermatic cord will then pass through the abdominal wall, that's passing through the inguinal canal, that special canal that's made by folds in the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, which is something else we can talk about another day. And look, it passes through the abdominal wall there and then appears on the inside of the abdomen, of course, uh, underneath the peritoneum. So that's how the ductus deferens gets into the abdomen and gets into the pelvis. And of course, up here, this is the pubis bone, right? So it's going up above the pubis bone and then coming around. Of course, the pubis bone is here and the bladder, when it fills with fluid, when it fills with urine, can be palpated superior to the pubis bone. And, and look, here's the ductus deferens coming around here. Here's the bladder. So it's going to come into the edge of the bladder, follow the bladder around. And up here, here's the ureter dropping down from the kidneys, right? So the ductus deferens is going to cross over the ureter as the ureter enters the bladder laterally. So that's the ductus deferens so far. Now, if we look posteriorly, here's the ductus deferens continuing around. And the ductus deferens continues. And what we see here is a seminal vesicle. There are two. It's been dissected on this side. So we've got two seminal vesicles. Um, and the ductus deferens is passing next to the seminal vesicle. And the seminal vesicle is going to duct into the ductus deferens. So the job of the seminal vesicle is to make semen. So we've got a couple of glands making semen, adding to the volume of the spermatozoa. Um, so the seminal vesicles are not for storing sperm. Um, the ductus deferens doesn't pass through the seminal vesicles. It passes next to the seminal vesicle and the seminal vesicle will squeeze its secretion into the ductus deferens. And of course, this is all occurring during emission and ejaculation. And we can see here the other gland, the prostate gland here. Let's pull this apart. There you go, so you can see the prostate. Hey, look, you can see, here's the prostate gland here. So here's the, so here's the ductus deferens coming around and here's the prostate gland and here's the urethra. Here's the urethra which the semen is going to pass out through. So this is where the spermatozoa are going to go through. So let's look inside the prostate gland and see what's going on here. Now, can you see, because we've cut a mid-sagittal section, there is a tube coming in at an angle. This is essentially the last part of the ductus deferens, right? So you've got the two ductus deferens coming around and then they're going to meet at, as the urethra is passing from the bladder through the prostate gland and out. So if we've cut in a mid-sagittal section, we're getting a glancing section of these, what are called ejaculatory ducts, as they come together and meet the urethra. Um, so that's what that is there. So this is the urethra passing out of the bladder. This is the ejaculatory duct, essentially the last part of the ductus deferens. So when the seminal vesicles uh, when their duct joins the duct of the ductus deferens and as it passes through the prostate gland, that's now the ejaculatory duct. And here's the prostate gland here. Now I've got another model. So this model here, this has been cut not in a mid-sagittal section, but along the plane of the ejaculatory duct. So if I take that off, look, here's the bladder, here's the prostate gland, there's the urethra descending through the prostate gland. Uh, the seminal, we got, we've cut through the seminal vesicle here and the ductus deferens and then here this duct that's passing through the prostate gland and it's coming in at an angle, that's the ejaculatory duct. So there are two ejaculatory ducts uh, and one urethra. Okay, so there's the ejaculatory duct. So the spermatozoa passing through the ductus deferens the seminal vesicles contract, squeeze their secretions into the ductus deferens, into the ejaculatory duct. And then this is passing through the prostate gland and the prostate gland squeezes. So it has a whole bunch of myoepithelial structures. Um, so it can squeeze its secretion into the urethra. Now the ductus deferens is a muscular tube. If you look at it down a microscope, you see a thick muscular wall. So what happens during emission and ejaculation is that the ductus deferens is contracting to push the spermatozoa along it. So a lot of these structures are contracting 
to push the contents of the ductus deferens and then the urethra along the urethra and out through the tip of the penis. Um, the job then of the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland, just to lump them both together, is they're adding volume, they're adding bulk to the spermatozoa, so they're giving them a, a carrier medium so that they can be um, pushed into the, the female environment, into the vagina, right? Um, they are um, alkaline because the female environment, the vagina and what have you, are acidic, so the alkalinity um, neutralizes the acidity, um, which is going to prolong the life of the spermatozoa. So all of these adaptations are to prolong the life, the functioning time of the spermatozoa so they live longer, so that they maximize their chances of fertilization. Right? You can see how this has evolved. This is a direct, uh, these are having direct effects on evolution, right? Um, uh, they secrete fructose, so they're secreting, uh, they're, they're adding sugars which will give energy to the spermatozoa so that the spermatozoa can whip their flagella, um, their tails, so they can propel themselves um, up the female um, reproductive tract towards the ovarian tube, which is where hopefully fertilization will take place. Right? There's a coagulating agent which helps then once the semen has been ejaculated and put into the female. Um, reproductive system will help hopefully hold it in place and stop it falling out. So the seminal vesicles, for example, are producing um, vitamin C, um, a bunch of enzymes, as well as the fructose, prostaglandins. Um, and if you, if, you, if you measure the uh, survivability of spermatozoa in a, you know, in a test tube or on a pet petri dish, if you add these things like vitamin C, we see that they, they remain active for longer and they live longer. So all of these things, all of these um, the components of semen are there to give an advantage to the spermatozoa. Seminal vesicles, prostate gland, ejaculatory duct, urethra. Now can you see this here? At the bulbo-urethral glands. There's one on either side and can you see there's a little gland there and it's got a little duct that's ducting into the urethra here. And the bulbo-urethral gland is gonna only produce a small secretion, so it's not really contributing to the semen much, but it is adding a lubricate um, to the urethra and passing out of the, the tip of the penis as well. So that's the bulbo-urethral gland. That's it, that's the path that spermatozoa take from the testis out through the tip of the penis. Um, oh, one other thing, bladder. One difference between the male and the female bladder and urethra is that there's an external urethral sphincter down here, which is under somatic control. So you can, you can squeeze that and, and hold, stop yourself, stop the urine from coming out. But the male bladder up here, there's an internal urethral sphincter as well, which the female um, pelvis doesn't have. So the job of the internal urethral sphincter look, is to close off that opening to the bladder during ejaculation, which will then stop ejaculate from going up into the bladder and will force it out through the urethra. So that's one th other thing that's different between the male and the female pelvis. And of course, um, with, um, with the prostate gland, um, we get benign hyperplasia, uh, you know, so this benign hypertrophy of the prostate gland, and you can get cancers and tumors forming in there as well. And it's, you know, it's, it's within a pretty small space. There's nowhere for it to go really, and it's surrounded by this fibromuscular capsule. Um, what this means is that if the prostate gland becomes hypertrophic, then it's gonna compress on the urethra. So it's gonna give some difficulties with, with uh, micturition, with urination, with urinating and stuff. But also it's gonna push up into the bladder and it'll push up into that internal urethral sphincter. And that might be associated with um, sensations of, of urgency um, to urinate, even though the bladder's not full. Um, and also um, frequency, you know, feeling the need to go to the toilet more often um, and feeling like um, the bladder's never quite emptied. Right, so that's the, the prostate gland there is right beneath that internal urethral sphincter.
the male reproductive system in a nutshell. nutshell. Right, let's go and have a look at that 3D printed heart, see if it's finished. The nozzle clogged. Uh, it's not printing. Uh. Uh.